In a recent discovery at the world-famous State Technical University of Pittsburgh in Du Bois, it has been conclusively shown that the import of Mexican citrus products has dramatically reduced major vehicle fatalities. Scientists are proposing massively increasing imports of Mexican lemons and oranges, possibly buying out whole crops, which may eliminate motor vehicle deaths altogether. The mechanism by which the lemons affect traffic patterns are not yet clear, but scientists are currently conducting research strapping chimpanzees onto motorbikes with bags of oranges tied to the handlebars. Now this is real data. As you can clearly see, traffic fatality rates have dropped and Mexican lemon imports have increased at the same time. The R squared, or coefficient of determination, is quite high, suggesting that there is a strong correlation. But why is this such a silly conclusion? It's because of a classic logical fallacy expressed in Latin as cum hoc ergo propter hoc, or correlation implies causation. Just because two factors are linked in some way, for example, occurring one after the other, or in the same population, does not necessarily mean one causes the other. In the case of our example here, lemon imports have been increasing probably due to economic factors, and highway fatality rates have been going down probably due to technological improvements in the same time period. So we have correlation, but not causation. That's not to say that we can't determine causation from correlation, in the same sense that we could build a powerful case on circumstantial evidence alone. But it requires more evidence to prove actual causation. For example, we need a good mechanism, and we need a model with predictive power. Some people still find this all a bit confusing. It's not the kind of thing we often worry about in our everyday lives. But scientists have to be very careful with these kinds of statements. We use associated with instead of causes. Two factors are related instead of one being the result of the other. I don't mean to be a correlation snob. There are cases when we don't have good causal relationships, but strong correlation data, and we have to make some choices on that basis alone. I think this is probably the case in global warming. The models are not yet sufficient to determine the causative agent or agents in global warming, but we have produced some compelling correlative data and it seems we must make some choices on the merit of the correlations alone. I'll save that for another day. The topic of this video is autism and vaccines. I'll start out by admitting a certain amount of bias on this issue. As a scientist with a background in virology,